more to be desired either than gold, yea, than much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey and the honey. Oh, praise the Lord. This is the Holy Ghost form. Uh, if you've noticed, we're uh, not meeting in the evening now on Tuesdays. We're meeting in the morning, so it might take uh, folks a little while to catch up that, with that. But if, uh, if you're new to us, uh, be sure and comment. Uh, leave uh, some remarks. We'd love to hear from you. And uh, we're at Gary Bailey Reach the World. Uh, and we're talking about all things... Bible, all things spiritual, all things Holy Ghost. This is the Holy Ghost Forum. Praise God. So I have Pastor uh, John Maruka with me on my right, and Pastor Gary Rudder on my left, Pastor of Bloodbot Church. And uh, we're just going to be fellowshipping around the things of the Spirit. And uh, we're excited about what uh, God has to say in His Word. We're excited about. Uh, uh, the Holy Spirit alive and well and living inside of us. And uh, I think with that said, we just want to worship him a few moments. So let's, uh, let's just uh, take a few moments aside and, and worship the Lord. Heavenly Father, we thank you, thank you Jesus. for thank all that you Praise are, you, all that you do, all that you've given us. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. We, thank you, Father. we praise you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. For your thank goodness you. and mercy. Your wonderful name. We thank you for your loving oh, kindness Jesus. in the morning. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Father praise God, for oh Rabashata Riaki Kalayati and De La Bashia. Lan telefant levant le vote la mata le rentia tele che teriato. Shane teriati a tianto ton teriati a tianto ton ton. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. Thank you, Father. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We praise your mighty name. We give you glory. Hallelujah to the King of Kings. Hallelujah to the Lord of Lords. We worship you and praise you. We magnify your holy name. We bless the name of Jesus. I am the Rehetriatan Diato, Hanteriatayan Teato, Hantela Maya Telekiantiatio, and a Maya Telenantiato. We worship you, we worship you, we worship you, mighty God. We worship you, we worship you, we worship you, mighty God. And to the Mayan they say, Ando ki yanda neba kanda mosi, yondo lolo boso ka yanda neme, yete neme, yete nemaka yanda no boko ka yende, andene. So, anoint your eyes with eye salve, yes. and open your ears so you can see and hear all that the Spirit would have for you. Look diligently and look right on to all that God has for you. For surely there are great blessings in store for oh, you. Hallelujah. Not to the right or to the left, Thank but look Jesus. to me, saith God. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank Amen. you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Praise, Praise you, Jesus. God. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Thank you, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you for the blood. Thank you for the blood. 
Thank you for the blood of Jesus Christ. Thank you for the blood. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you. For you know, uh, the thought, uh, the scripture, just the idea as we're worshiping the Lord came. You know, in the world, in this world, we have tribulation. But Jesus said, be of good cheer, for I've overcome the world. Amen. He said, peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world gives, give I unto you. And then he said, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. Amen. Hallelujah. One of the, uh, uh, to me, uh, with the Lord residing on the inside of us one of the greatest things that I experience in my walk I think is the peace of God God's peace you know the Bible says that in the last days men's hearts will fail them exactly. uh, for fear yeah. and uh, we you know sometimes we're you know I've been accused of living in my own little world you know we live in our own little bubble because you're well, a lot of people of faith are like that because you're not you're not allowing the circumstances and the conditions in life to impact you and affect you the way it affects everybody else. I don't think God created you to assimilate all of the bad that's happening in the world. Yeah. It's overwhelming. Yeah. yeah. And yet we have access to all of it. Yeah. We can turn that tube on any time, night and day, all night and day, and watch all the atrocity <laughs> going on all around yeah. us, in our neighborhood, in our area, around the world. Yeah. You were never made to handle that. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> if that weren't enough, people make up their own troubles by worrying yeah. about things <laughs> that never <laughs> happen. Well, my mother used to worry about things to worry about. Okay. Is that right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, you know, like that's the way it looked to me, anyhow. You yeah. know, she, if she didn't have something to worry about, she would worry about having something yeah. to worry about. And typically, the things we worry about are things you can't do anything about. Yeah. yeah. So just let it go. You can't do anything about it, and and then sometimes they don't even happen yet. And then, I mean, and, you're worried then, about things that never happen. And then if I would say something about it to like one of my siblings, they, they would say, "Don't you like mom?" And I'd say, "Huh." It doesn't have anything to do with liking her. I'm just telling you what she does. You know, she's always worrying. Well, she worried herself to death, basically. Yeah. I don't know if it's the, you know, the way the devil twists things, but the way my mother, and I love my mother, she's still oh, alive and well. That's what I'm saying. I love my mother, you know. But what they did was they took worry. If they weren't worrying, it meant they didn't love you. Yeah. You know, that's how they, that's how my mom thought. And I'm and, sure that's what your and, mom And then when, when, thinking. when they would, like, some of my siblings would say, well, you know, Johnny's big, in big trouble. You know, he's doing things that he shouldn't be doing. My mother would go, don't worry about Johnny. <laughs> Johnny's going to be a preacher. And they would go, oh, you're out of your mind. <laughs> <laughs> she knew, didn't she? Wow. Well, she uh, never saw it until she, well, she went home and then. It was like uh, two years, maybe a year after that. Yeah, I, I got saved. Yeah, well, I well, gave my heart. To, I recommitted my life to the Lord as well. Well, obviously, John, with her saying that, she had a lot to do with you. Uh, yeah, she was like uh, what, a it, what it talks about in Romans, you know, calling things that aren't as <laughs> yeah. they, they were. Exactly. And and uh, my sister has, you know, she had given she had given testimony about that. Well, you know, like uh, uh, my mom used to say that he was going to be a preacher. And I should tell her she was nuts. Yeah, but. <laughs> That's funny. God has a sense of humor, mm -hmm. doesn't he? But uh, yeah, my uh, I was just thinking about worry and stuff. And a lot of people equate, you know, if if you don't worry, you're not concerned, or you don't care, or you're just. But that's not it at all. God told us to cast all our care upon Him, because He cares for us. What can we do by talking about it, by thinking about it, by rolling it over in our mind again and again, the negative things that can happen, it does nothing but but produce fear. And, and I already quoted the scripture, your heart can fail you for fear. Fear can impact a person uh, in a physical way. So 
we want to be people of faith. And people of faith, well, in fact, the Bible says there's a scripture in uh, Philippians, I, I like it. It says, uh, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, make your requests be made known to God. So really, if if my mother and others uh, uh, like her, your mother and others that just, well, I, I'm just worried about this, I'm worried about that. If they would just make a small adjustment, that's why I say the devil, I think, takes uh, takes what they could apply to in faith uh, to help someone. Just a little bit of tweaking, a little bit of twisting, and it's it becomes negative, you know. Uh, instead of praying, why aren't you praying about it? Don't yeah. worry about it. Is yeah. what, that's the point I'm getting to. Uh, we need mothers that pray. Well, we need people that pray, not worry, not be filled yeah, with fear. Some people, when they claim they're praying, but they're really worrying. Well, that's that's true that's too. Yeah. They because they don't understand the the whole never, they never the whole principle. Any victory in it. Yeah. Yeah, but, you know, it's interesting what the Bible says in that verse I'm quoting. It's from uh, Philippians 4, 12, somewhere around there, 7. Uh, anyway, it says, be careful for nothing but in everything by in, in, prayer. In everything. Yeah. Not for everything. Yeah. In. In everything by prayer. And, and that <laughs> phrase right in the middle of the verse, everything That's right. by prayer. You know, don't, don't let anything get past you that you're worried about you're fearful about you're wondering about everything by prayer just make it a matter, matter of prayer there's other scriptures uh, similar to that anything you do everything you do do it all in the name of jesus when i when i first got saved you know i hung around with the preacher a lot because i had a lot of time on my hands and uh, he would say well you want to go with me you know like the, the, the second day i was out of the church you know like you know I mean, in the church, he asked me if I wanted to go pray for this woman in Pittsburgh that was having some kind of problems. Anyhow, we went up. And, uh, she was laying on this table. It had more tubes going in, and I, I said, "What is this?" You know, and he goes, "Don't, don't look, don't look at that." He said, "Don't look at that. We're, we're praying, we're praying in, in reference to what God wants to do. Don't look at that." <clears throat> And that, that was hard for me not to look at it yeah. because, you know, I was so accustomed to looking at what you can see. Yeah, you know, is every, this when you're learning faith when you're younger? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was okay. like the first day yeah. after the week's revival, we got saved. He goes, "You want to go with me to pray for some people?" I said, "Yeah, I'll go." So he took me to Pittsburgh. This woman was in uh, Presbyterian Hospital, and. <coughs> When I walked in the room, you know, where she was laying, I looked at him and I said, we're going to pray for her? And he said, <laughs> "He said, yeah. And, and I said, well, oh. I said, really? I said, she's a goner, you're, yeah, you're thinking. thinking. She's a goner, <laughs> man. You know. got an easy one? Yeah. yeah. You know, he goes, he goes, no, no, no. He said, don't look at that. Don't look at the circumstances surrounding this whole thing. He said, we're praying and we're praying by faith, believing that she's going to get well. That's it. And I said, okay. I said, I'll, I'll go ahead and, yeah. you know, go ahead and pray with you. <laughs> so we prayed, and, uh, like, the next week when we went back to see her, she was sitting there, uh, sitting up, you mm -hmm. know. And I, I walked in the room, and I'm going, are you the, and she said, yeah. And he goes, yeah, it was her. That's her. You know, and, he, you know, she... She had uh, <laughs> diabetes, and I think she had one of her, uh, she was missing a foot. Yeah. And he, he was like a character, you know. He said, yeah, she's ready to go ice skating as soon as she gets her new prosthetic on her on her leg, you know. But she laughed, and, and <laughs> I'm standing there in amazement that what this person that I saw, like, just a few days ago was, like, yeah. basically healed. Yeah, praise God. Yeah, well, God has answers. God, he's our redeemer. And uh, Well, and one of the things he used to say to me all the time, because I was in so much of, it was like a lot of turmoil going on, even though I had given my heart to the Lord, still a lot of turmoil going on mm -hmm. for where I came from. 
and uh, he and I, I'd go to him and like sometimes, and I'd say, I I can't get this thinking out of my head. And he said, Well, here's a scripture you go with: whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are of a good report. Think on yeah. these things, yeah. and then the peace of God will that surpasses all understanding will guard your heart and mind. Amen. And and he said, You'll be fine. We're not supposed to you know per se live unattached in the sense that we're not aware of what's going on right. i mean some people you know have the idea you should never reason read a newspaper or never uh watch the news but how are you going to pray if you don't know what's going on right. in that sense so you can't be so unattached that you're not aware but on the other hand you can't be so engrossed and so dug into some of these negative things that it overtakes your life and causes sure. fear the only the only reason I, I, I was uh, listening to someone talk about what happens when a Christian has a dream and it's so real and it's you know it's something negative somebody got killed or someone was hurt well why would why would God give you a dream like that so you can pray you know you've got to know what's going on or maybe even what's coming ahead so that you can put yourself in a position to stop what the enemy wants That's to right. do. Well, you were talking about fear. You know, you're talking about fear. Fear is right in the church. Yeah. You know, when, when somebody brings forth a tongue message and nobody wants to come forth with the interpretation, when you know that somebody has it, mm -hmm. somebody has it, you know, it's like we've been talking about. When people come to church, they ought to recognize that you have a tongue message and God wants you to give it. Yeah. But you know what stops them? Fear. Fear. Fear of they're man. Fear. They're fearful that they're going to make a mistake. And like we've said, if you have a tongue message, you cannot mess it up. Yeah. That's why uh, I think... Uh, because it's unknown. <laughs> right. That's right. Right. They don't know. You don't know. No, that's a good know. point, Gary. <laughs> that's right. You know, you can't judge a person on giving the tongue because it's unknown to begin with. But what a great thing! Uh, I, I've been telling our, our people. I've been telling them um, tongues. Quoting a quote from John Lake: "Tongues is the voice of the Holy Spirit." That's right. So when you give an utterance in tongues in a public service you're literally allowing the holy spirit to express himself through your voice and give uh but give yeah, a message to the people a lot of places the holy spirit isn't allowed to speak well you're exactly right there that's uh, <coughs> uh <laughs> yeah um but i i think that's where you got to get back to verse 26 in chapter 14 where he says uh how is it then when you come together, every one of you hath a psalm, hath a doctrine, hath a tongue, hath a revelation, hath an interpretation. We need to have all the ingredients That's in a right. church service. And and the thing about it is, what I like about giving it, you know, in my instance, this isn't everybody's case. In my instance, when I go into a place, whether I know whether there's an interpreter there or not, I don't concern myself a whole lot with it. Yeah. And the reason is, is because I know if worse comes to worse, I'll interpret the message. Yeah. You know. The, the whole purpose <clears throat> of the tongue is to, to bring people's faith up. That's right. It's something dynamic, something supernatural happening right on the spot. Yeah. And people have an opportunity to respond in faith. You know, or not. when I've been mentioned, and I'm not exactly sure why it is, but after every, uh, we'll have worship, and then I'll come up in front of the pulpit, and we'll worship a little little more, and then um, we'll just take a time, we'll get quiet, the organ stops playing, we'll just wait. You know, they used to call it, what, the holy hush back in uh, the charismatic days, but it's not just the holy hush. This is the time that's designated yes, in our we're church. We're waiting on the Lord. Yeah, we're waiting on the Lord. And uh, so we'll wait. And we usually, in any given uh, service, we'll usually have at least two people give an utterance in tongues. 
And uh, then after that's done, and you know, we wait a little bit, and then I'll just go ahead and have everybody uh, relax and sit down. Then I'll teach for about three minutes on tongues. I'll teach about it. And what's happened is, uh, gosh, the last uh, the last month we've had three, two new people give utterances in tongues, and one person came up to exhort the. He told me beforehand hand but he came up in front of the church to exhort the people on worship just one of the people who worship i said hey that's great but uh people are beginning people are beginning to see the value of the tongue mm -hmm. and we haven't i really i think because preachers and pastors we've only relegated it to intercession or relegated it to prayer or your personal devotional life and we haven't shown people the value of it in the public service and that's what that's what, really what has to happen for people to to get involved you know well, i appreciate that uh, the lord direct me to this church where i've been going attending on sunday morning and you know like they have other things going on and i've been going to some of those things but i appreciate this pastor that's there he's 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 wanting to empower these people in fact he has meetings uh uh i think it's bi-weekly for empowerment you know yeah. get, getting people involved in the gifts and and the people that are there i mean it, it it's it's incredible to me uh i i met a couple guys there. I, I call them deep wells yeah they 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 really are uh you know you you can tell that they're there yeah you know? and uh they're not just dead weight in the no pool. no 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 yeah. the, the, and 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 i know that this pastor appreciates the fact that he has these guys because i mean there were 20 guys there last night and that's the, a good group for any it, church yeah you know and, and I mean, the, this church is a 500 people wouldn't get 20 men out for well they don't have 500 they, you know no i, I know I'd i know say i'm just Sunday saying morning, big churches they might have 120 may, maybe yeah. And I'm guess I'm just rough guessing it, but uh, these guys, if you want to see people, m men. I mean, and what I like is that they're the men of the church are hungering and thirsting, you know. And you, you know, the more they hunger and thirst, the more they're going to be filled like this. And and it was I appreciated this one guy. He he said he spoke up and he said I'm Mexican, and I don't know why he said that, but you know, uh, I mean because. You knew he, I knew he was something, you know. Uh, he, he wasn't, uh, you know, an all-American boy, you know, but, he, you know, he might be a Mexican-American. I don't know. But he spoke up and he said, my name's Danny and I'm a Mexican. And I said, praise God, I was waiting. I wanted to hear, for some reason, I knew he was going to say something that r really was would be impactful. And he did, you know. And uh, then afterwards, he says to me, he goes, I want to tell you something. I said, go ahead. You know, he says, you know, when, when you speak in the church, you know, and I've only given a couple tongues, tongues, you yeah. know, and then I interpreted my last one. Yeah. And uh, he said, when, when, when you speak, it's like God's talking to me. I said, well, guess what? He is. <laughs> and, you know, when he said that, you know, I'm thinking to myself, because, you know, I, I'm a new kid on the block. And yeah. to just jump out there with a tongue because nobody else is nobody else is coming forth and 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 I oh, hallelujah tongues anointed tongues yeah. expresses the voice of God exactly. Th think about this uh, you, you all know we have an, a, a mutual friend named Todd Levin uh -huh. well his dad Yale uh, got saved in a church uh, after hearing a tongue and an interpretation the tongue came forth. And he was standing up. Yale was standing up with his eyes closed. But he saw in a vision when the interpretation came forth, it was, why don't you believe me? I'm the son of God. Right. And, uh, and he was Jewish. <laughs> he was yeah. Jewish. Yeah. And uh, he got born again God. through that tongues and interpretation. Ah, just an expression of the power of God. Uh, Gary, ayakitaba. Thank you, Jesus. 
Yea, says the Lord, my heart is toward my people, toward my people for blessing, toward my people for joy and for peace. Thank you. My heart is toward my people, and I desire to move through the divine expression of speaking in other tongues and interpretation. For in the speaking of tongues, the uh, unknown is breached by man mm. over into kingdom things that are only known of Thank God. You, mm. And herein is my heart revealed to those that I desire. Mm. Praise God. That's Thank powerful. You, God has taken us into the unknown through tongues and interpretation. That's a that's a great revelation right there. We we live in this material world. Yeah. And we're totally absorbed by it. Yeah. You know, our five senses, right? But we've been born into the kingdom of God, Amen. a whole nother world. And uh, the, the connection, <coughs> the main connector is our words. And when we give our words to an unknown tongue, we are immediately speaking kingdom language. Yeah. Immediately. It's powerful. That's powerful. God is toward us with love. He's toward us with joy. I love that. That's the Holy Ghost. Praise God. We need to, how can I put it, breach the natural and the fleshly realm and press on in to the spiritual realm. I want to say a couple of things about fear. All the world lie in darkness up until Christ. Everybody was afraid to die. But since Christ raised from the dead, said, because I live, you will live too. Yeah. We can conquer the fear of death when we receive Christ. Christians ought not to be afraid of dying. Right. right? I mean, it's we That's count right. it as a promotion. I mean, we're looking for the day when we cross over. So, yeah. so that main number one fear that rests on all of humanity, not us. Right. Okay. A proper fear of God will relieve you from all other fears. The biggest hindrance to the move of the Spirit is the fear of man. Mm. People are afraid what people will think or what they'll do or how it'll work. And so we're that's what we're afraid of. But if if we had a proper fear of God, we would not be afraid of what people would think. We would we would rather be afraid of what God would think. Sure. If we if we would hold back. And, and that's the place that. the fear of God holds in our life, so yeah. we can be bold and strong in spite of what men or people do. What, what who is the prophet that God told him several times? I think it was Jeremiah. Uh, be not afraid of their faces. That was him. Yeah. Uh, and he was a young man. I mean, he was called from his mother's womb to be a prophet. So he grew up in a, uh, I'm assuming, a godly home that feared the Lord. And uh, uh, then God sent him out to prophesy. And uh, the thing that could have stopped him was the fear of man. Uh, but uh, he went ahead and prophesied anyway. Ended up in a miry pit. But uh, uh, he got out of there all right. Good, good. Yeah, God took care of him. Well, uh, <coughs> was it Gideon that, you know, he was just being a farmer, I think. Yeah. God come along and called him. a sycamore fruit. God come along and called him a mighty man of valor. Yeah. And he's going. <laughs> Who are you talking about? Who are you talking to, man? <laughs> you talking to me? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and he said, yeah, I'm talking to you. And, uh, and the next thing you know, he's doing these feats for God. But. Yeah. The, the thing that I see is like last night, <clears throat> the preacher said, "Well, we're gonna we're gonna close with some praise and worship," and so everybody started praising and worshiping, and, you know, like uh, or praise and worship, and you know, it just it just dawned on me that we need we need to uh, bring forth some prayer here, yeah. and so I started praying, and you know, I prayed I prayed for uh, <coughs> anointing to fall on the church and continue to just fill the place and uh the next thing i know when i was done praying this guy started praying and this guy started yeah praying, and how about that, that guy started praying and, and, and i'm thinking whoa this is this 
all all they need is a uh, a little catalyst. Yeah, they need that's all. That's it. They need something to get it rolling. You know, yeah. and 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 when I, I then I just stood back and you know waited for another turn to get in there to pray because the one guy asked for prayer for his friend and I think the pastor sort of like missed it because he had his mind on somebody else to pray for and that's fine you know and and so I prayed again and I prayed for that guy and then it, it then it just like really you know the the whole everybody was into yeah. it and you know, I heard guys praying in the spirit and you know it was it was just really uh, an anointed meeting I, I mean you could tell people didn't want to leave you know because yeah. it was so uh, on fire well you know you brought out a good point there John, uh, how many times does the Bible tell us uh, be an example to others, exhort one another, um, you know, basically be a leader, uh, and how it impacts and touches the lives of others. So, so uh, fear begets fear. Remember, I just right. read where the children, the twelve twi- tribes came back. Uh, they're in about Numbers uh, fourteen or so. Uh, from spying out the the 12 spies right. came back from spying out the land and uh, they all uh, they all gave the people a bad report mm-hmm. except for uh, Joshua and Caleb and uh, mm-hmm. it influenced the entire nation Yes. and so what ended up happening was because of those uh, basically 10 men that brought back that evil report the entire nation stayed in the wilderness for 40 years. God dealt with them. Uh, a plague came upon them, and those 10 men all uh, all died prematurely, along with others. Yeah. I mean, uh, others down through, you know, you see one group and this group and the other, and, and uh, I believe it wasn't anyone for the next 40 years, anyone over 40 died and never entered into the promised land. Yeah, God said, as they have spoken in my ears, so shall it be. Yeah. Yeah, it's such a sad thing. So, but having said that, we can influence people in a positive way. Amen. You know, I love it in the book of Acts where the religious men look at these unlearned, uneducated fishermen Mm -hmm. and said they've been with Jesus. And, uh, of course, I'm sure in one sense of the word many of them were educated more than we are as far as the scriptures are concerned because they grew up in a right. in the synagogue learning the scriptures but they were still working men they were still you know your average joe well like Paul, and, what did he do he made built houses basically yeah but the point was with those disciples average joes that had been with jesus for three years right. so so the influence that we have on others the influence that others have on us uh there's a scripture in uh i don't know if i can find it here um it's in hebrews but uh, it essentially says this through faith and patience follow them who through faith and patience inherit the promises yeah. and uh i heard a, a friend of mine preach this and he said you got to keep this in mind it wasn't uh it, it's not telling us to inherit the promises by faith and patience. It's telling us to follow those who, through faith and patience, inherited the promises. So in other words, we need good examples in our life. And we need to put around us people that are full of faith and Amen. absent from fear. And, and, uh, and follow them. The Bible says follow them. Follow them. When they get results, follow them. And you know what that put that put something in my mind and and I uh, I've done it some but I need to do it more is we need to give people examples of the victories we've had in our lives whatever area that is Um, we need to show them when we got a prayer answered this is how it came about this is what I was feeling Uh, I uh, uh, was preaching on Sunday and basically got into some stories about what, how God had worked in my life. And I, I really think we need to do more of that yeah, because, yeah, because of that scripture that, that through faith and patience, follow them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. If they, 
if they haven't seen any promises I've inherited, then why why would they follow me or anyone else? So by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and that's another reason too, not only can we point to, you know, maybe examples in our own life, which I believe that's what that scripture alludes to. Follow them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. But we ought to uh, put before in, in our preaching and ministry, we ought to put before people our heroes and the people that we've followed and the people that have influenced us. And I got a long list of them, uh, you know, from the guy that founded the Bible school I went to, to George Muller, who took care of 60,000 orphans, to Charles Finney, to Father Nash, who was a praying man, to uh, John Lake, to Jonathan Edwards, who preached sinners in the hands of an angry God. And <laughs> there's just so, so many. I, I'm so thankful for, uh, for books and for recordings and for uh, materials that show us the lives of people that we can follow <clears throat> them because they through faith and patience inherited the promises well uh, on on the other side of the coin there uh, the pastor was talking about you gotta you gotta really let the Holy Spirit guide you when you're buying books he said because there's some books out Isn't there not the truth he said there like uh, this John MacArthur he said he has a couple books out there that sound like, you know, they're really good books. He said, but let me tell you, he said, don't, he said if we, if you want to read them to find out what a, the untruths are in them, fine. But he said, you're better off just to stay away from them yeah. because they're whacked out. You know, like I don't even remember that Bible Answer Man used to be Hank, on. I was thinking Hank, of the same guy, Hank, Hank, Hank Hanegraaff. Yeah. Bad news, you know, and they, and I I. So you put I, fear and doubt and unbelief in people. What What is God going to do with these characters when they stand before Him, and you know all the people that they've led astray? I yeah. mean, uh, I remember Him saying uh, one time that uh, Dakes, you know, the commentary Dakes going. I mean, that is solid. Yeah. You know, and 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 He was all over it one day. They. Uh, I had him on the radio. I was driving somewhere, and I was listening to him because I wanted to hear what, because I thought he was a goofball, you know. And really, he was, you know. I, I mean, he needs prayer big time. But I was thinking to myself, to lead people astray like that, yeah. What is what is the consequence going to be for that, you know? Because you know the Bible says people that uh, claim to be teachers are going to be held much more accountable than people that aren't. I think most of these renegades were birthed out of a hurt in the church. They got hurt somehow mm -hmm. in a mainline church group somehow. And spend their days now talking about the negative on stuff. On a vendetta in the opposite direction. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I yeah. That, uh, you know, not only is it true with that kind of an individual, but nearly any atheist that I've heard talk I mean they're angry they're just angry about everything and uh, they're mad at God they're mad at the world and so they just say okay you don't exist you know and uh, but they got they got upset they got hurt they got well, offended well the experience that I went through in the last year uh, my friend from Texas she can tell you you know she's she's heard the anger you know I don't I don't I don't, I don't expound on the anger in yeah. front of everybody but you know, uh, the the anger I have is because I recognize now that m my wife just didn't die a natural death. Right. You know, so uh, there there was some anger there. But the thing, and I'm what I'm what I'm saying all this for is to get to what you were saying, and that is you can get to a place where you you know because you don't trust man. You, you you can let that fall over into your walk with God and start not trusting Him. Sure. Well, then when you start doing that, then you're then you're in trouble. Right. And so, when you get to that place, there's two ways you can go. You can either decide to trust them, or you can decide 
to defy him. Yeah, yeah. And and you know, uh, I was telling them last night. The more you know, like I was thinking about different things, and uh, but those pivotal points, John, happen in a lot of people's oh, lives. Yeah. And then they start going down another direction that's altogether. Right. That's right. They get into the defiance part. And, and when I think about my, you know, I sometimes wonder, why am I still serving God when I had friends that had similar experience, got filled with the Holy Ghost as young people, or got saved as young people, but they're not, you know, today they're either not serving God, right. or I've seen people through the years, they're either not serving God or they're they're just kind of nominal, just kind of yeah. going with the flow. Why is it that I'm going for it? Because it's just what you said. Every time the devil challenged them, you know, every time, uh, like when the seed, uh, we've been, uh, I've been looking at the parable of the sower, and every time uh, uh, a weed crops up, you know, thorns and thistles, which the Bible describes them as uh, uh, the cares of this life, the deceitfulness of riches, the lust of other things, uh, persecutions and trouble. Anytime those things come up, it takes the word out of their heart. And uh, they, either, they either decide to pull the weeds or they decide to plant that word deeper and yeah, let it yeah, produce yeah, a harvest. You have, to, you have to go after it. But you have to make a decision. That's right. You have, At that point. You have to make that decision whether you're going to trust them or whether you're going to defy them. Yeah. It's either or. And once you make that decision, you, you know, and the thing about it is <clears throat> not to say that you might not waver a little bit in your decision. No, I understand. Yeah, because, that, that because be you, you, you know, I, I remember an, uh, I went to a youth convention. I was a youth minister at one time. And... Uh, went to this youth convention in uh, Harrisburg and they had a play and what it was was the enemy you know the, 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 it was like a guy was living his life and he was walking along and the enemy would come out from from wherever and like jump in front of him and then you know he would give him a piece of the word and the enemy would take off but the thing about the enemy is he comes back again, you yeah. know, and that's what that's what he keeps doing. He, he, you, if you think that you're you're just going to, you know, a lot of people think, well, you know, I'll get saved and everything will just be coming up roses then, and I won't have to worry about nothing, you know. Well, you know, that's a fallacy there, yeah. You know, because you know, if you think that that's the way it is with your walk with God, it's not going to be that way. And I found out just last year, you know. If you if you just you know if you just let that armor down a little bit, yeah. he'll he'll get a shot in at you some one way or another. That's for sure. And, and if and if you're not if you're not if you're not rooted and grounded in the Word of God, there's yeah. a good possibility that you might end up defying him. You you think about this. <clears throat> this word is the most precious, and you've got to see it this way. Otherwise, uh, it won't make a difference. Um, the, the writer of Proverbs said, uh, keep thy heart with all diligence, mm -hmm. for out of it are the issues of life. Because it's in your heart that God plants that seed of the word. It's the most precious thing we have. And that's what the devil's after. He's that's not right. trying to. He's not just trying to irritate you. He's that's not right. just trying to. He's trying to steal something. Right. And what he's trying to steal is that precious seed of the word of God that's going to change your life forever. Because when it comes forth, first the blade, then the ear, then the full corn in the ear, it is going to produce a pile of results and harvest. I want to uh, very quickly read some of the comments our, our uh, guests here. Uh, thanks for logging on. Thanks for the comments. If you're listening, go ahead and comment. Let us know what you think of uh, our uh, uh, our forum here. And if you have any questions, we'd love to answer them. But uh, Jimmy K. Uh, says, uh, working great this morning. That's He's talking about our connection here. Candy's watching, uh, says. 
Uh, Jimmy K again says, good morning, y'all from Texas. Uh, Phil and Candy Drace uh, says, thank you, Jesus. I'm making a comment here. Uh, Jimmy K brings up uh, fear. Uh, she has an, aunt, uh, what do you call those? Uh, Anna, Anna, uh, Anna Crumb or something. Anyway, it's a uh, fear. Uh, it's false expectations appearing real. That's good. Uh, uh, Candy here says, praise the Lord. Then again, uh, Jimmy K says, amen. Testimonies bring more miracles, bringing more testimonies. And the circle goes on. That's a good point. Acronym. Acronym. That's what we're looking at. Yeah. An acronym is when they use a, a word and then the, the first letters form out something. So fear, uh, she says, it's false expectations appearing real. Yep. Praise the Lord. Well, the Lord is good, isn't he? Yes. Amen. Uh, anything you want to share here, Gary? I want to just say this as far as expectations and uh, this life that we live that we walk by faith mm -hmm. <clears throat> I don't know anybody whose faith has been perfected right and uh, whenever something doesn't go the way I expected or desired or prayed or believed I look for some way to improve my faith uh it, yeah. It's fruitless to uh, blame it on God. <laughs> you know, right. There's no no good end to that. It's right. a waste of time. And on the other hand, I know that there's always room for me to improve, to grow, and to learn. The other thing about faith is I, I cannot, nor do I desire to control anybody. Yeah. If we would let go of that, most of our praying would be relieved of because so many people pray trying to control things on with other people that's a good point that's and uh, good you're point. you're getting out of your purpose there you know yeah you're what we're to, supposed to be doing not god you know he's yeah. god really we're supposed to be praying the word yeah for people's lives we're not manipulating people when right. we say lord uh, we want you to fulfill your word give them wisdom give them strength bless them, heal them, save them. Uh, that's we're, what we're playing, praying for them. Where we get into trouble sometimes is, uh, Lord, uh, I don't know, uh, you know, um, make them uh, be nice to me or make them uh, uh, marry me or make them... Uh, Dream on. Yeah, make them this or that. And uh, we, we're, that's not the way we should be praying. Yeah. But... Uh, Anyway, praise the Lord. God is good. Yeah. I, I, I just want to say that, you know, I, I didn't realize until last night how impactful tongues and the interpretation are on people. You know, they're sitting there listening. That, yeah. Yeah, we don't know sometimes. When, when, when that man came to me and said what he said, I was, just, I was when going... A, when a tongue is released in the congregation, everybody is on alert yeah it's like it it demands that your faith come up yep. yeah you know it just demands well when you bring <clears throat> everybody's faith up in the room uh that's pleasing to god god's yeah. gonna do things god yeah. god responds to that without and faith it's impossible to please him in my prayer last night i prayed for the congregation there that they would become more emboldened with, you know, because I, I hear people praying in the Spirit all the time. So they, they have the baptism. It's not like they don't have it, mm -hmm. you know. So I just can't understand why more tongue messages aren't coming for it. Yeah. Well, because... It's the fear of man. I know it's... That's yep. what it is. And, and lack of understanding, Gary. A lot of people are waiting <clears throat> for some special anointing or feeling uh, to give yeah. a tongue sometimes. You know, instead of just obeying the scripture. What I, when in our church, I put it this way. I said, if you ever in a service where you feel like God wants to do something, but you don't know what it is, 
that's when you give yeah. in that's right. unknown time because you don't know what it is. You yeah. just know Praise God's God. heart is to do something. Yeah, that's your right. desire is yeah. for so to see God move. So you do it. You do it. Yeah, you know? yeah. And well, again, that's what people need. They need to know that they have the capability to allow God to move and flow through them. Like uh, Smith Wigglesworth, if I'm not mistaken, <clears throat> would come to the pulpit and be dead in the water, so to speak, have nothing to say and be him hawing around. But he said, I expect the Holy Ghost to meet me there. You know yeah. what I mean? I, he places a demand on it. Yeah, Is he ready amen. to preach? No, but he gets up and starts and places the demand on the Holy Ghost. And sure enough, the Holy Ghost responds to that because that's faith. That's yeah. how it works. Yeah. And when the Holy Ghost hit him, he become this other guy that everybody reads about. Him. Amen. Um, having a desire for God to move, uh, and uh, and I've preached it inside and out, is just obeying the Bible. Just yeah. obeying the Bible where it says, uh, if any man speak in an unknown tongue, let it be by two or at the most by three and that by course and let one interpret. Uh -huh. Paul's just matter of fact about that. He doesn't say when you, you know, if you're feeling mighty low, give a tongue. If you're feeling good, give a tongue. If you're feeling happy, give a tongue. Well, th that's true too in one sense, but you're not supposed to go just by your feelings. You're supposed right. to go by by what the Bible says. And uh, feelings in, can follow those things. You, you know? believe in the Word of God. Yeah, you're believing the Word. You believe in the Word. Which, believing, uh, someone said one time, Wigglesworth walked back and forth across the platform as he's preaching, just repeating this one thing. Faith is an act. Faith is an act. Right. Faith is an act. You do something. Well, act on the Word. You know, there's a, there, there's a whole series on unbelieving believers yeah you know and that's really what you're having that's really what you got in the church they're believing but they're when it comes to the gifts it's unbelief you know yeah. they're unbelieving believers i like uh, the english language here faith is a noun it's something you have believe is a verb it's something you do what you do reveals what you believe amen hmm so if you're not doing anything, you, you ain't believing. You're not believing. Yeah, yeah. And and he had a he had a last night at the or, or Sunday night he had a, at the meeting <coughs> he had a video of this guy. Um, I can't remember what his name was, but uh, it was on uh, unbelieving believers and believing unbelievers. Mm -hmm. You know, and there and, and there are believing unbelievers. You know, they. I mean, and the reason <laughs> is. is because, <laughs> Well, I mean, you know, they, they believe in the supernatural, you know. They, oh, okay. <clears throat> they might not be believing in God, but they do believe in the supernatural. Oh, yeah. You know, and, and uh, he, he had a stat, I think he said like 80% of people in the United States say that they're believers. But, you know, what are they, be just what are they believing, you know? <clears throat> yeah, for sure. Well, praise God, the Lord is good, isn't he? Amen. Praise Amen. God. We're going to take a short break here, and uh, we'll be here till 12 o'clock this morning, Eastern Time, Texas. I don't know what time it is over it's there. A, it'll be 11. It'll be 11 o'clock there, so appreciate you all. Uh, uh, let some other people know we're online here, and uh, uh, we're going to take a short break, and we'll be back uh, shortly. Sweeter also than honey and the honey. 